All right, welcome back to Cross Country. Millennials have been a rising power in the American electorate for over a decade. They were the driving force that helped Barack Obama get elected in 2008, and they have been a strong presence helping Democrats to cross the finish line in races all across the U.S. since then. However, in recent years, there's been a shift in the generation and in their political preferences. Data from the Pew Research Center shows that current millennial voters are changing their support from Democrats to Republicans and getting closer to levels seen by baby boomers and Gen X. And now joined by four millennial voters who have made those changes themselves. Um, thanks so much for being here. Um, I, I think I was just like you guys. I'm a millennial. My first political mm -hmm. campaign when I was 15 was Barack Obama. And as y'all can see, we're probably not friends mm -hmm. anymore. Um, I, I, <laughs> Tina, I want to go to you first. Um, what are some of the most important factors for you in a candidate? Sure. Um, for me, I like integrity. I like somebody who's going to speak out on the issues and not and be able to disagree without calling people that disagree um, any insert phobe here or some kind of hateful remark. You know, we're all just we're all just trying to do the best for our country, and that's what I'm looking for in this candidate. What about you, Jelani? I need I need somebody that's going to actually look at these issues and not try to make it about just like one party issue. It's all bipartisan for the most part for the issues I'm looking at out here in Washington state. And it looks like the rest of the world. Hmm. Lydia, why did you leave the Democratic Party? Yeah, that isn't that the million dollar question. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I left uh, the Democrat Party. Uh, when I was 24 years old, I voted for Obama twice. It really began with conversations at work with coworkers, and mm -hmm. then it led to me just seeing the bias in TV shows like The View and late night TV. And then I just at some point realized I no longer support these values. The Democrat Party is standing for something that I no longer or had always had in my in my culture, the way I was raised. I. I just didn't support that anymore. And the Republican Party supported those values more closely. What about you, Sydney? Why did you leave the Democratic Party? Yeah, so when I was in college, that was the first time that I voted was when um, Donald Trump won the election. And on Smith, it was it's a women's college. So the whole campus was in mourning because Hillary Clinton didn't win the election. So I, it was a stark difference between then and 2020 when I had a lot of time on, our, on my hands, just like everybody else. And I really started to look into the Democrats and I realized that None of my values aligned with them. Mm -hmm. And a lot of my values actually resembled that of the Republicans. But mm -hmm. I'm at a point now where I'm not necessarily for like blindly going with any party. It's just that I definitely know that I lean right. Yeah. What, what values are important to you? Yeah, I, I would say family is really important. Another thing is health. I think mm -hmm. our country has a obesity epidemic mm -hmm. that is not being addressed. We have a food supply that is just really messed up. It's poisoning us. And then the things that are promoted of, oh, go get fast food. Oh, get Ozempic. Oh, get all of these quick fixes okay. that are not getting to the root of the issue. And not only that, I would really like to see us address this AI thing that's going on. So mm -hmm. someone who has knowledge of the current technological landscape is extremely important. Yeah, that's so, mm -hmm. so, so fascinating. Uh, Tina, is there anything that the Democrats can do to win you back? Man, <laughs> I swore I would never go back, honestly, <laughs> after... <laughs> After being one of those pink haired septum ring feminists, I, that was me at one point, if you could believe it. Um, if I could have somebody that would really turn this economy around, as a new mom, this is really hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Groceries are getting more and more every week. It is just rough stuff out there. Um, I would love somebody that would really honor. Um, you know, just financial, this economy, fix this economy, um, honor bringing our troops back home and on our medical freedom, giving the people back their their rights over their bodies. Um, somebody that would also be sticking up for the, the rights of the unborn as well. Mm -hmm. Jelani, is, is there anything that the Democrats can do to win you back? No, because as of right now in Washington State, I'm scared as a father. I mean, they're passing laws like the 5599 bill and it's like, that's taking away our children and not even informing us until they feel ready. And as a father, as somebody that's really passionate about my kids, 
like just for me to not understand my kids and then the government's able to take them away from me without any knowledge of what's going on with them mm-hmm. makes me scared for anybody. Yeah. Lydia, do you think the, the two parties are doing a great job in attracting minority voters? Oh, wow. Um, Yes and no. I mean, the Democrat Party is certainly doing very good on the ground floor when people are coming in um, through the border and through these uh, organizations that are bringing them in. But uh, I don't know. The Republican Party is definitely speaking to voters. And now they're going in with into their language, into their communities and definitely speaking like we, we support your values. We have those family values. And so it's it's kind of like they both kind of have uh, different parts of the party. But you know, I feel like the Republicans are winning them over in the end. Yeah. Sydney, what about you? Do you feel like they're doing a good job in attracting minority voters? I think part of the issue is that we focus too much on these identities as opposed Mm -hmm. to what are the actual problems that we have in our society and how can we get behind that? Because I think especially with things like TikTok and just social media in general, but especially TikTok, it really silos people off to these Mm -hmm. communities, and it only further makes them more intense about their community that they're quote unquote a part of. Mm -hmm. And it's like, if we take the identity aspect out and we're like, okay, we have homelessness that we need to solve. We have obesity that we need to solve. We have inflation that we need to solve. And we have like this technological advancement that we need to solve that nobody knows how to use. How do we attack those issues? How do we solve those issues? And I think that's a better way to bring people together versus our skin color, what we have between our legs. Because ultimately, we're people. That doesn't matter. We all want to live Mm -hmm. good lives, um, take care of our families, you know, have fun, go travel sometimes. And we, in order to do that, we have to have our finances together. Mm -hmm. We have to know that we can actually like go out of our houses and do what we need to do and all of these different things have our health together so we can actually enjoy our trips and enjoy Mm -hmm. our families so it's like if we solve these problems i think that will bring the country together and these are what these are the issues that i think politicians need to focus on versus the identity politics so well said Uh, so we, we know this election is essentially coming down to two candidates Things can change, um, but it looks like it's Joe Biden and Donald Trump again. So uh, I'll go to you, Tina. Uh, Who are you going for and why? I mean, if it was between those two, I would obviously have to go with Trump. The economy was just wonderful. He was securing our border. Um, I feel like, yes, there was divisive (laughs) moments. Maybe maybe he should have been off Twitter, but um, I would definitely (laughs) vote for Trump if that was between those two. Yeah, what about you, Lydia? I would definitely vote for Trump. He put America first. He made sure that the people were always first and um, it wasn't just in the best interest of the government. So I would definitely vote for Trump a third time. What about you, Sydney? Yeah, I would definitely vote for Trump. I was like a huge Trumper. I have like this (laughs) cup. (laughs) So I would definitely go for him, but I also am considering like Vivek. I like his ideas. I think he has a fresh approach. So I do wanna, I am thinking about him. Okay, Jelani, what are you, who are you going for? I'm definitely going to go with Trump. I mean, regardless of how the news tries to paint him, he's still a family values kind of guy. And uh, I mean, look at how the world's going right now since he's been out of office. I'm, I'm definitely going with him. Yeah, you definitely sound like some of the brothers that I, I talked to in the barbershop. They just feel like they may have disagreed <laughs> with some of his tone. Uh, but but life was better for them. Uh, y'all, thanks so much for joining. Mm-hmm. It, it's great to finally talk with some people on TV that are my age. So thank y'all for being a part. <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Y'all have a good one. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.